Right, so how about a bit of a blast from the past? There was a video posted back in December by a fellow by the name of Nick Tavola. I hope I got that uh, pronunciation right there, Nick. Um, it was a video that apparently uh, his dad used to have on VHS. It was recorded off the TV. It would have been back in the late 80s, possibly early 90s, I think most likely late 80s. Uh, the transport industry, particularly Hume Highway, and the issues being faced at the time, how they were going to crack down on truck drivers because they weren't happy with the amount of accidents and uh, the carnage being caused on a nightly basis. So let's have a look at that and we'll see what we can get out of it. Truckies call it Sesame Street because at night the Hume Highway becomes a bit of a playground and the favourite game is hide and seek. Be Thanks to a sophisticated CB network, police cars or double bubbles, as the truckies call them, are easy to find. All sorts of things are uh, being suggested to us, cut out the uh, police on the side of the road, but of course truck drivers would very soon identify those sorts of things. Victoria Police Assistant Commissioner Ron Anstey says no one's come up with a solution to truckies tracking them. The police's only weapon is the occasional blitz. It's very quickly known that we're out there, and after the first night I suppose, the word spreads, uh, particularly amongst the truck drivers, and you have some very good results as far as driving is uh, for the rest of that week. At the same time, of course, We've noticed it reduces the number of accidents on those highways. As soon as we get them to slow down? As soon as we get them to slow down, yes. The station wagon was ripped apart, killing instantly two local brothers, aged nine and eight, and their six-year-old sister. Recently, there have been several horrendous accidents involving semis. The bus carrying 38 passengers collided at high speed with a semi-trailer and two cars. New South Wales road statistics show that of an increase of seven... Now, the bus in particular was at fault in this particular accident. It was not a truck caused accident. 70 deaths last year, 90% involved heavy vehicles. The state governments are threatening tough measures to clean up the road transport industry. The statistics only show the accidents. They don't show why the accidents occur. And it could be well that the, uh, the truck drivers are not at fault. Paul Gaynor is the federal director of the National Transport Federation, a lobby group for truckies and fleet operators. You have speeding by motorists, by car motorists, by trucks, you know, everyone's at fault. And I think we have to look at the totality of it rather than saying, you know, trucks, trucks are, trucks are big, they're massive, they create a lot of attention, but they are major road users, they are mainly for road users, and therefore they, they receive, I believe, uh, a major attention that is not warranted. We decided to take our own night ride on what the truck is called Sesame Street. rolls down this bitumen than any other stretch in Australia. 1,000 trucks travelling 1,000 kilometres every night, all of them with a deadline most motorists couldn't meet. How much pressure do you reckon there is on you guys? Equipped with our MCB, we decided to join the convoy. And it wasn't long before we found the cowboys. Funny, isn't it? They were worried about the cowboys. Look what's going on now. clocked this truck doing 128 kilometres before deciding it was too dangerous to follow. Would it surprise you to hear that we clocked semi-trailers going up to 130 k's on the hume? No, that doesn't surprise me at all. I think they, they're required to make their runs in a certain uh, time, uh, and uh, if they don't, then when uh, they likely lose the run to another company. What many of us don't realise is truckies often carry cargo. The customer believes it's overnight air freight. It's been alleged some companies pay drivers bonuses to speed. Right, eh? So, there you go. What's changed? Well, slow down a bit because it used to be go, 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 we'll pay you fine if you get caught, has now become you can't get to the depot too quickly. If you got from point A to point B, in what they consider to be an illegal time, 
whether it's due to your fatigue, rests, or actual road speed, uh, the company's not happy. Now I've worked for one or two of the companies shown on this expose, and I've worked in the air freight industry, and I've worked in the road freight and express freight industries, apart from also doing tipper work, done a lot of that as well, drain fertilizer and the like. But I've done a lot of express work as well. And it's funny, a couple of years back, quite a few years back actually, back in the days where TNT's overnight courier service was called TNT Air Couriers. And uh, I think it was Four Corners, may have been 60 Minutes, one of those sort of programs. Uh, they decided to send a whole bunch of altimeters or altometers around the country just to see how far they got off the ground. And lo and behold, none of them got above road height because none of them left the ground because they were all on trucks. Customers being charged air freight, freight's going on trucks. Now, that's pretty common. I used to work for a uh, leading air freight company in Canberra and same thing applied there. They used to run trucks to Sydney and to Melbourne, uh, further afield places or anything particularly urgent or after hours did go on planes, but the bulk of the freight, particularly for Sydney, was on a truck. Now, truck's got to get there and back, it's got to get loaded, it's got to get up there, it's got to get unloaded, it's got to get reloaded, it's got to get back. And the way the freight industry works, for those who don't know, particularly in the parcel freight industry, express freight, is you've got local trucks running around all day doing their deliveries and pickups. So they do the pickups in the afternoon and the customer always wants their freight picked up the last second of the day and they want it delivered first thing in the morning. Now, this presents a problem because that freight's got to get back to the depot and quite often, especially with traffic and the way the cities are expanding these days, it can take sometimes you know, an hour for the local pickup of the delivery vehicle to get back to the depot. Then that freight's got to be unloaded. Then it's got to be sorted out to the destinations that it's going to. Then it's got to go either air or most likely truck. It's got to be loaded onto that vehicle or those trailers. It's then got to be driven to the destination. And then of course the reverse, it's then got to be unloaded, it's then got to be sorted. It's then got to be put on another vehicle and the customer expects it on their door at nine o'clock in the morning. Now, that's just the way it works. Do the maths. Most interstate, intercity jobs in Australia, it's very, very difficult to do it in a legal time frame. Now, the big difference is now, of course, is that we have much more emphasis on speed and fatigue regulations than we used to have. There are many more ways of getting caught. The penalties are higher, both in fines and points. And it's just not in a professional driver's best interest to have their license taken off them. It is their livelihood after all. So it's not quite the same way as it used to be. So these days, even the major companies that used to push used to really hound their drivers and contractors to be where they had to be in time. They can't do that because it's just not the way the world works these days. Unfortunately, the customers all still expect the same service. But as for air freight, I've run air freight for about four different companies in a truck. Now the truck doesn't have wings, it doesn't have jet engines, but more often than not, it's still quicker and definitely more cost effective it's funny, it used to be that you had a deadline. When you left the depot one end, you must be at the other end by a certain time. You must be there or no excuses. These days, you leave the depot one end and if you get to the depot the other end in too quick a time, then you're in trouble. And it has to be that way because they have to cover their backsides. This is a different era, different age. I mentioned in that little video there, very, very important to notice is that the statistics given were that a very, very high percentage of fatal accidents uh, you know, in New South Wales in this particular case, but nationwide, do involve heavy vehicles. But statistically, heavy vehicles are at fault in a very small percentage of the cases. It's just basic physics. If you're going to have an accident that involves a heavy vehicle, most likely the car driver is going to get killed. 
Now, the thing is, there are some bad truck drivers and there have been some ridiculous accidents caused by truck drivers, not disputing it at all. But on the whole, the truck driver is not at fault. Anyway, that's a little blast from the past. That's the way it was, that was late 80s. It's now 2024, different era altogether. Did you notice? Wasn't a single blue double. Those were the days.